Back to the SBR Boxing's YouTube channel. This is a reaction video to the news that Tyson Fury will fight Francis Ngannou on October 28th in Saudi Arabia. Elliot, delighted as always to be joined by you. Special sort of reaction video here. Tyson Fury um, is not fighting a boxer. We were aware of the rumours that have been swirling around this fight for a while. We knew he wasn't going to be fighting Usyk next, despite the, the back and forth over the last few months. Um, now that it's official, I think we all knew this was going to happen your thoughts on the fact that it's official and it's a fact Tyson Fury will be fighting Francis Ngannou in an exhibition belt in October. What are your what are your thoughts? Well, my initial thoughts are like fair play. Someone's tied Tyson Fury down to to a fight, frankly, and in, in in some ways, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to disagree with what I'm going to say here, but I'm gonna, I kind of partly believe this. But in some ways, it'd be nice to see him back and like in the ring and actually competing and see what sort of shape he's in. But I'm sure we'll touch on this in a minute. But when it comes to the actual fight itself and the timing of the fight, I, I can't help but be a bit disappointed, to be, to be perfectly honest. Yeah, I just think... What, what do you think this is? Do you think this is a... um? Because obviously Tyson Fury, as recently as yesterday, put out a video um, mocking um, Usyk, Usyk's manager, Alexander Krasuk. Um, what do you think this is? Do you think this is just a case of Fury didn't want to fight Usyk? Um do you think it's a case of Fury just kind of is kind of going through some sort of gap year in his career and has fought Derek Chisora back in December, which was just quite an easy fight. It's now for a fight fighting France and Garno. He's going, he's going to be going through a period of around possibly, I mean, yeah, over 18 months between the Dillian White fight and whatever his next actual boxing match is going to be mm. without having an actual competitive fight against an actual boxer. Um what do you think is going through Tyson Fury's head right now? A brave man to, to answer that question. Well, first off, say that I, you know, I ride a classic on this on this whole thing, this whole situation. Um, I think for Fury, there's there's a sense of like a, a sort of rampant ego, essentially. That that I don't think part of me just thinks he can't necessarily potentially get himself up for a fight which isn't either one of the two big guys, um, and also that he kind of sees this. Maybe it's a way of kind of pushing the Mayweather McGregor button and just going like, I'll do something that's massive that doesn't really, that sort of transcends the sport. But I'm not particularly convinced it's of that scale, frankly. And I think mm -hmm. most people, and this is the opinion, I, the overriding opinion I have on it really is that you're an act, like you've alluded to there, you're an active world champion boxer. Your CV isn't decorated enough to be wasting time in exhibitions like this when you're supposedly at the peak of your career. So I kind of, in some ways, like the only way I can kind of like rationalize it in my own mind is whether he's just seeing that like he could probably turn up tomorrow to be perfectly honest in a boxing exhibition and beat Garnier. Like, I'm not, I'm not going to sit there and say it's going to be difficult for him. So maybe it's a way of kind of turning up, going to a bit of a light training camp, losing some some weight, whatever, getting in better shape, and then going from there hopefully to a boxing fight. But other than that, for me, there's no rule, there's no real rationale behind it. Yeah, it's it's just it's a strange one. I think one thing I, I I do want to discuss with you is, as you as you touched on that, how big is this fight? Um, I remember hearing rumors a month or so ago that it was going to happen in the UK. Didn't hear about the venue. That's now not happened. It is happening in Saudi. Not sure what the venue is in Saudi. How many people it holds? Obviously, this fight will be pay per view. Um, do you think that this will capture the imagination of the casual fan? Do you think that? Casual fans will buy into this. Mayweather McGregor financially is the biggest fight of all time. Um, obviously, that was between a boxer and an MMA fighter. Do you think that's the the case here? Do you think you will get people buying into whether it's casual boxing fans, UFC fans? How big do you think this fight's going to be? Um, the casual fan, it's hard to say this obviously because obviously Fury sold out venues fighting the likes of Dillian White, who is. I uh, don't talk about dealing with again really well. I think it's obviously a very good the Chisora one as well. I mean, you're, you know, you're selling out. So it's a significant, obviously, um, casual interest with Tyson Fury. But I think the difference we draw there between the Mayweather McGregor one and this one is actually McGregor's profile compared to Ngannou's profile. Like McGregor was a crossover athlete, and I don't think Ngannou is, frankly, in the same way. I don't think like a lot of people who, if you follow UFC, obviously, will know who he is. I don't follow UFC and only sort of tangentially know who he is. So there's people that are literally going to sort of sit there. Who don't follow that sport so would have absolutely no clue that walk down the street and wouldn't even know who he was. Um, so I feel like that audience won't actually be captured. But when you talk about like numbers it could potentially do, 
I'm reluctant to rule out anything given what we've seen Tyson Fury sell so sell so far. Um, but I think the fact it's also an exhibition, um, it hasn't even got the sense of like, you know, obviously with the Mayweather McGregor fight when you know McGregor was talking about in a real fight, Kaleem, et cetera, et cetera. Then there's others talk about maybe there's be a crossover like fight where they can use their legs or they could use whatever like yeah, after that one. This to me just seems kind of ridiculous uh, given it's going to also be an exhibition like you wouldn't expect Fury to come in and KO him in the first round that would just seem ridiculous so you kind of expect well I kind of expect it to go the full eight rounds whatever it is as an exhibition um, mm. so then again are people going to want to watch that what's the undercar going to be like like to me I just I, I don't think it's going to be good no it's not going to be I'm, honest, I'm not even sure I'll watch it tell you that for, for stuff yeah I'm tempted like, I would love just to kind of clock out from it like you know unfollow Michael Benson on Twitter for a few weeks and then just like try and try and try and stay away from it if possible. Um, just I've got two more questions for you, Elliot. First question is, again, you touched on that. What do you think is going to happen? Do you think there's a chance Fury is just going to kind of just jump around with this guy for eight rounds? If you remember when David Hay fought Joe Fournier a year or so ago and it was kind of built as friends who had fallen out and whatever and it was former heavyweight champion against a guy who may or may not be a boxer and they just just jumped around for six or eight rounds, however how many rounds it was. What do you think is more likely? Fury goes in there, wants to make a statement <laughs> and kind of mm-hmm. knock out this massive kind of beast who's a who's a who's you know been seen as seen as a top top UFC fighter, or do you think it could literally just be jabbing around ducking and diving punches for, um, for eight rounds. What do you think is most likely out of those two scenarios? I don't think I don't think Fury will go in there and blitz him, frankly. I think he could, obviously, but I think if he does, it'll actually bring more negativity and criticism than if he actually just like treats it as a bit of a banter fight and goes in there and sort of like moves him around. I can kind of see him. Look, we've seen him do it with boxes before. Was it Safari when he had that comeback fight where he just sort of stood in the corner and let him try and punch him and moved around? I can see him doing stuff like that, to be honest, and then coming out and talking about... UFC fighters being big, stiff, idiots, whatever you know, that usually types to say. Um, so I actually see that being more likely. I mean, I can see him potentially sort of like trying to put it on and go on a, a little bit. But we saw, didn't we, with, with Jazor when he was like holding him up at times. I don't I don't think he's... I'm not saying that, that the guy who's Jazor or vice versa, but I think I'd be very surprised if he, if he knocked him out given this next exhibition, frankly. I think it would also be in bad taste. Um, if it went the other way around, potentially, or if Ngarni like caught him maybe and he lost like his rag a bit, but I just don't see him. I don't see him stopping him. Really, I see it being more a case of him just like say in the corner, moving, slipping, showing off in that respect, um, and then hopefully, hopefully, taking on a serious boxing fight at some point in the very near future. We'll see, and that leads me on nicely to my final question. Um, what would your response be if I said to you that I think that Tyson Fury might have lost the will to compete at the top level? If you can consider he's gone out and picked Jazora to fight in a fight, a guy he's beaten twice, we all knew what was going to happen in that fight. Could have fought Usyk. Um, I think it was April 29th was the date, and that turned into different dates, so you might never fight Usyk. Um, and look, if he hadn't fought Usyk, then you know the Joshua fight was there. There would there would have been other there would have been other kind of top 10, top 15. Um, heavyweight fights that he could have he he could have fought instead of Usyk or Joshua instead of fighting Francis Ngannou. What would your reaction to be to that statement that Tyson Fury may never compete at the at the top level again like he has done in the past? Well, well my reaction to be one of disappointment. Well, I'd also be surprised. Right? So I think Tyson Fury is one of those guys that I'm not saying he's ducked Joshua. I'm not saying he's ducked Usyk, but he's definitely. He's definitely spoiled those UCIC negotiations, frankly. And I think, like, I think to be honest with you, and people have made this comment before on the ESBR and outside of ESBR about the sort of risk reward when it comes to UCIC. I think he will actually fight UCIC at some point, but I think he's just waiting for him to sort of, to sort of degrade a bit further before he does so. I also don't think Fury is really used to, in some ways, being the favorite, if that makes sense. I think he likes to sort of create narratives mm. and, like, also likes to almost feel like he's overcoming some, some like, surmounting some massive challenge. I don't think Joshua or UCIC, I still think he'll beat both of those guys, frankly represents that and I think for him it's kind of like it's always seemingly been a motivational problem but what if I was him or if I was advising him I would say you've got to look at your current record frankly 33 victories whatever you've got on that record you can talk about you know being an all-time great but that CV is an all-time great CV frankly and if you retire in 10-15 years yeah you could have the sort of WWE crossover sort of celebrity audience sort of essentially like you know 
I suppose, honouring you in some way and, and, you know, sort of blowing smoke up your ass for a better phrase. But in the boxing world, you're not going to look at that CV in 15, 20 years' time outside of Wild and outside of that one Klitschko victory and say this is an all-time great CV because it isn't. And if you're in the prime now, you need to be taking fighters there in their prime. We're in the top 10 now and actually putting on credible defences. There's plenty of fighters he could have fought. But, you know, yeah, I think he, I think he will fight. I don't think he'll fight Joshua. I don't think that fight. I think that fight's gone, frankly. Fair enough. Okay. We'll see. I'm going to have to wait a few more months to see if Fury, um, who Fury is actually going to fight after this exhibition. We don't know when he's kind of planning to, what his plans are for 2024, but we'll see. Elliot, thank you very much for your time. Um, October the 28th, Tyson Fury will fight Tyson, will fight Francis Ngannou, sorry, in an exhibition fight. And we will we will see what happens. Um, thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much, guys. And, and as always, thank you very much for watching.